and Nikki Giovanni. And now, here to introduce the program is the producer of Soul, Ellis Hazel. Good evening, I'm Ellis Haystep and I welcome you to another Soul episode. One of the miracles of this universe that we deal with is the way it can use something as cold and gray and as impersonal as an electron. These electrons that fill your television screen to bring you an experience as warm and as rich and as human as the program you're about to see. And we here at Seoul are extremely proud that we have been able to put together two programs, conversations between two brilliant and eloquent members of the black family, Nikki Giovanni and James Baldwin. We had to travel to London in order to tape these programs, and we then edited them to fit within our time schedule of one hour. Tonight, you will be seeing the first hour of this conversation. And next week, we will air the second part. Mr. Baldwin, who is now living abroad, is the author of Going to Meet the Man, Tell Me How Long the Train's Been Gone, The Fire Next Time, Another Country, Nobody Knows My Name, Giovanni's Room, Notes of a Native Son, Go Tell It on the Mountain, and A Rap on Race with Margaret Mead. James Baldwin is also the author of the plays Blues for Mr. Charlie and The Amen Corner. Nikki, as most of our viewers know, is an old friend of souls and one of quite a few beautiful people who has always made her time, energy, and thinking available to us. She is the author of Black Feeling, Black Talk, Black Judgment, Recreation, Gemini, and Spin a Soft Black Song. She also edited an anthology of black female voices titled Night Comes Softly. So here now are Nikki Giovanni and James Baldwin in conversation. Jimmy, I'm, I'm really curious. Why did you move to uh, Europe? Well, when did, why or when? Oh, why? I think I know when. <laughs> <laughs> I, moved, I moved to Europe as far as one can say I did. I moved to Europe first in 1948. Uh, because I was trying to become a writer and couldn't find in my surroundings, in my country, a certain um, stamina, a certain corroboration that I needed. For example, no one had ever told me that Alexander Dumas was a mulatto, and no one had told me that Pushkin was black. And as far as I knew when I was just very, very young, there had never been anything, as far as my father knew, which is much more important, there never been anything called a black writer, you know. <laughs> <Can't dig it. laughs> <They're> still, <laughs> so when I was, you know, when I was when I was 24, I, I split. I went to, and came to Paris and worked and went home in '57 and worked and stayed and was based in New York really, um, in and out because I was work is on the one hand making speeches and on the other hand trying to write, mm -hmm. you know. And I never was able to write in New York, so I would go out and do my work and come back and do my work, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I understand. And that all ended in a way, or something else began, after Martin Luther King was murdered, and I spent a long time in limbo. And at the moment, I'm based in the south of France, but there isn't any way ever to leave America. You know, I would be a fool to think that there was some place I could go where I wouldn't carry myself with me, or there was some way for me to live if I pretended I didn't have the responsibilities, which in fact I do have. Mm -hmm. So I'm, in a way, just living, I'm a cat trying to make it in the, you know, in the world because I'm con condemned to live in the world. <laughs> condemned? <laughs> condemned, condemned, condemned in the sense that, condemned in the sense that when you're young and also when you're old, you would rather, you know, have around you, you know, the expected things, you know, to, to know where everything is, you know. And it's, it's, it's a little difficult, but it's very valuable to be forced to move from one place to another and deal with another set of situations all of the time and to accept that this is going to be, it is, your life mm -hmm. and to use it, you know. It means you, in a sense, become neither white nor black, you know, and you learn a great deal about um, um, 
Um, you have first learned a great deal about the history out of which all these words and conceptions and flags and <laughs> martyrdoms <laughs> right. come. Yeah. There's something that eventually I'm sure we're going to hit, so we're just going to have to work it out. All right. Okay, but let's start, let's say, with um, everybody's protest novel, which I think came out in 48. It came in out in 49, 40, 49, something like that, yeah. yes. When I was six. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I thought All it was right. a magnificent piece. I went to first grade, I said, my God, somebody's really talking. How do you stand in relationship, say, to that novel now? To that, uh, I mean, to to everybody's the, uh, protest novel, yes. that essay now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, what do you think about, let's say, the younger writers, of which I am I'm one? And, and within that context, are, are we, in your opinion, like moving ahead? Are we moving out of that basic set of assumptions? Oh, I think I, 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 I think it's very difficult for me to to say it. it you know, it can, it can be misunderstood. But you have no you have no idea, and I can never express to you to what extent I depend on you, or. I mean, you, Nikki Giovanni, and also mean your generation. My generation, yeah. You know, um, I can even say you have no idea, and I can never express that either, because I have, in a way, I have no right to say it. But I'm very proud of you. Something has moved. Things move in a very strange way, and maybe inexpressible. Mm -hmm. If I wrote that essay today, for example, I would be writing a very different essay, out of a very different kind of um, problem. Mm -hmm. I think that without quite realizing it, and no matter, no matter what our hang-ups are as of this very moment, the hang-up of my generation or the hang-up of your generation, mm -hmm. you know, and the terrible situation in which all of us find ourselves, it is, it, one thing has changed, and that is the attitude that black people have toward themselves. Now, within that change, I don't want to be romantic about it, a great deal of confusion and coherence, you know, <laughs> will, will go on for a very long time, very, very, very you very know. Time. But, that was inevitable. Mm -hmm. That moment had to come too, you know. And everybody's put us now what I was trying for myself, after all, first of all, to elucidate for myself a theology and the effects of a theology, which I, at that moment, realized I carried in myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it was not the world that was my oppressor only. Because what the world does to you, if the world does it to you long enough and effectively enough, you begin to do it to yourself. Mm -hmm. You become a collaborator an accomplice of your own murderers, mm -hmm. because you believe the same things they do. You know, you think it's, they think it's important to be white, and you think it's important to be white. Mm -hmm. They think it's shameful to be black, and you think it's shameful to be black. And you have no corroboration around you of any other sense of life. You know, all those corroborations which, which are around you are, in terms of the white majority standards, so deplorable, they frighten you to death. You don't eat watermelon. You know, you get so rigid you can't dance, you know. You can hardly move by the time you're 14, mm -hmm. you know. You're always scrubbed and shining. You know, a parody of God knows what, because you know, no white person has <laughs> been, you know, as clean as, <laughs> as clean as you have been, been forced to become. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, and you've got to somehow to begin to break out of all of that and try to become yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. It's hard for anybody, but it's very hard if you're born black in a white society. Hard because you've got to divorce yourself from the standards of that society. Mm -hmm. The danger of your generation, if I may say so, no, we will pursue this length no. if you like, no. 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 is to substitute one romanticism for another. Mm -hmm. You know, because in fact, these categories are, to put, to put it too simply, but you know, with a certain brutal truth, these categories are commercial categories. It's true. You know, there was a reason that when you and I were slaves, my son, produced out of your body, was by definition a slave. Mm -hmm. But the master's son also produced out of your body, depending on his color. If he was light enough, he could be, he could live in the big house. And if he wasn't, he took his condition from the condition of his mother. He was still a slave. Though. He was a slave. He was a slave. He was a slave because even though he, he went, might be the master's son, the master could make money off of his son. Mm -hmm. The whole institution was threatened if a slave woman 
could produce a free man. Of course. And the dilemma begins there. Do you see what I mean? I don't see why it's the dilemma. If, if a the slave woman can produce there. a free man, that a slave woman was forbidden, <laughs> that by, means anything a slave woman was forbidden by law, I said the reasons yeah. are commercial, to produce a free man. Because once you have a free man out of the body of a slave, you, no, you no longer have a slave. That's true. You know? And, but it's very hard to recognize that the, 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 the standards which have almost killed you are really mercantile standards. They're based on cotton, they're based on oil, they're based on peanuts, they're based on profits. Yeah, to this day. To this hour. Yeah. Which the church sanctifies. But the church is commercial. It's when you begin to realize all of that, you know, which is not easy, that you begin to break out of the culture which has produced you and discover the culture which really produced you. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. What really brought you where you are. When you're in trouble, when I'm in trouble, I do not sing um, um, a Doris Day at Tin Pan Alley tune. You know, you, know, you find yourself you know, humming and moaning, you know, uh, you know something which yeah. your great to do grandfathers did. No. That has to do with oh, no, us. No, that has to do with us. Yeah. And what, we are, we're, what it's all about is the attempt now to, to excavate something which has been buried, mm -hmm. you know, which you contain and I contain, and which your kid contains, and which has got to carry which one has a hand down the line for the sake of your kid and for the sake of future generations and even for the sake of white people who have not the notice idea what this means. Because we have the edge over the people who think of themselves as white and that we have never been deluded into knowing, into believing what they believe. I know it sounds like a contradiction. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but in fact, you watch the man you work for. You have to watch him. You don't know you're watching him. <laughs> you're watching him. But you're watching him. But he's not watching you. He thinks he knows who you are or what you are. Mm -hmm. You don't know who he is because your life is in his hands. And you have to watch him because if you don't watch him, you may have lived from Monday till Tuesday. It's as simple as that. And without knowing you know him, you know him. He can't fool you. I'm not, I'm not at all. I mean, the civil rights movement, I came up in the 60s which is like way after everybody else. But we always assumed that we knew white people, you know what I mean, that we really sort of like understood them. And I found out that if you don't understand yourself, mm -hmm. you don't understand anybody else. Mm -hmm. And all you know, you know what I mean with the snake is to watch a snake. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. know it's a snake, but you don't know it. That's right, that's right. You know what I mean? That's right. Because there's too, ma too much between, there's too much emotion. There's too much you know fear. I, mean? I can watch like the cat I work for, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he's gonna watch me to some mm -hmm. extent. But we know each other, I would say, I would hypothesize that he knows me better because his game is running, mine's not. And that's what I've sort of always disagreed with your generation on. I as long as his game is running, he obviously knows me because he's, he's I'm playing. You understand, I, he's I, saying jump and I'm saying how high. Yeah. He knows me. You may be right, but I would put it another way. I would, I would put it, I would, I would suggest that it's, since his game is running, he hasn't got to know you because his game is running. No, you're part of the game he's running. He hasn't got to know you. I would think that one of the reasons that, that uh, the Americans are in such trouble now is because the game is running. It was running until, up, until, up, up until only yesterday, really. <laughs> what do you believe today? You know, and all of a sudden, through the American astonishment, the Americans have suddenly discovered that people in the world don't like them. Yeah. Now, I always knew that, because I didn't like them. You know, I loved but some. They're not likable. But well, there's two people that are they unlikable. Ain't likable. And there's no. two people in the world that's not likable, a master and a slave. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly, you see? exactly. You know, the, we will never, 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 never get, you know, get precise categories for well, that very loaded statement, <laughs> you know. But that, but that, that is where the truth is. Yeah. How did you, know? you like them? So the question, I mean, for me, the question has always been power. Yes. And for, like you all, the question has been morals. You know, I never wanted to be the most moral person in the world. I agree, I know what I you would mean. like, I mean, I would sell my soul, you know what I mean? What yeah, does it profit a man to gain the world and, and lose his soul? The mm -hmm, world. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. world, that's what it profit. I know. So you take the soul, you know. At least yeah, the thing that's spiritual. Take I the world, know. but give me Jesus. Yes, Y'all can yes, have Jesus. Yes. Give me the world. You know, even though it's losing 25% of its energy every 100 years or something ridiculous. Oh, please, don't believe all <laughs> Don't believe everything you hear. No, but I'm saying that's not know, my I concern, know. you know? I know. Even though it's polluted. Ugly, dirty, give it to me. Speaking or let me or I will take it or not. But let, speaking, I speaking, it. I agree with you. It I agree with you. Me. But speaking for, speaking for myself, but also speaking as representative of, 
of my of my generation. Mm -hmm. But it's probably safer to speak only for myself, really. You know? I know that in my own case, what I felt and still feel, perhaps in a different way, but what I felt very strongly in the years, for example, when I was when we all were marching coming down those dusty highways with Martin. Look, I left the church when I was 17 years old, you know, and I've not really been to a church since, except, you know, when I had to go f for various fundraising rallies or this or that. And I was not exactly the kind of Christian that Martin was, if I could be described as Christian at all. It's hard to be the kind of Christian either. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? But I liked him, I loved him, in fact, and I knew that something was happening through him. And my concern was, yes, the world. But I'd seen what white people had done to the world. And I'd seen what white people had done to their children. You know? Mm -hmm. Because in gaining the world, they had lost something. A lot. You no, know, they'd lost the ability to love their own children. Or the ability which to love themselves. Which is the same thing, you know? And I didn't want that to happen, if I may say so, to you. It was not a matter of morals so much as a matter of being forced, in my own case, to suggest, to keep suggesting that though it was indeed you know, a matter of power, power without, the word morals is misleading, power without, power without some sense of oneself is simply another kind of sterility. And that black people would then become exactly what white people have become. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a danger. You know, I also accept this, that that danger is not, is not up to me to tell anybody how to run, you know. Mm -hmm. I can only speak as, as what I am. I'm a kind of poet, and if I'm a kind of poet and I'm responsible from my own point of view to the people who produce me and the people who will come after me, mm -hmm. you know, so that when the Holocaust comes, and it will come, you know, eventually, eventually, no matter how simple black and white terms may be today, life is not that simple. And sooner or later, if I do my work as I should do it, when I'm needed, I'll be there. You know what I mean? I don't know the people listening, I know what you mean. Because I think the most important, I think that I do, because I think the most important thing for any of us is when, when what comes, or when what we know will come, comes, mm -hmm. that we have the strength to say, yeah, it came. That's right, it came. <laughs> you know? It came. And I'm going to stay in my apartment and on 94th, and you'll be in Nice, mm -hmm. but we'll say, yeah. And we'll also be able to ride out the storm, but what is more important is not so much riding out of the storm for you, Nikki, and me, Jimmy, mm -hmm. you know? But in my mind's eye, there's always that kid. He's going to be here when you're gone. Oh, yeah. You know? Hopefully. And when I'm long gone, and from my point of view, it is, it is about the children. It is about the children. We have to give the children something, which in a way was after all given to us, though we had to learn how to translate it. Because your kid will be moving in a very different world than the one in which I grew up, which he won't know anything about at all, or the world in which you grew up, which will be remote for him, mm -hmm. and yet he comes out of it and has got to carry it much further than you or I will be able to carry it. He's got to have respect for it, but not be trapped by it. Precisely. You have to give, both give it to him and liberate, it, liberate him from oh, it. Yes. You know. And I think that kind of thing has been lacking. Like, I think one of the nicest things that we created almost as a generation, and it wasn't us because Martin Delaney and those people were way before us, but just the fact that we could say, hey, I don't like white people. Mm -hmm. oh, great. It's a great you liberation. Know, it was a beginning of, of course, yeah. being able to like them. Exactly. You know, exactly. which of course it upsets them, but that's their problem. Yeah, but their problem, you know. their problem really is a, a kind of, um, we were talking earlier before the show began about the kind of incomprehension in somebody's face. And you t trying to describe what is to you a very simple situation. Right. You know, like people don't like going to jail. And you, and you see the man's face and he looks astonished. What? People don't like going to jail. <laughs> And then you, <laughs> and then you, you pull back. <laughs> you mean so? <laughs> you know, does that really go on? And you, you live with this all your life. And what you watch is that he knows it really. He doesn't think that you know it. He doesn't think anybody will tell him. And if it comes in, as we were saying earlier, if, if he allows that to enter into his guts, he's a very different person. He may be. He, it may. He. It. 
he may explode. He doesn't know what will happen if he allows this apprehension of someone else's experience to enter into him. Right, because he's perpetuating his experience. And this is, this, is, this, is, this is the crisis of the age. This is what Malcolm really meant when he said that white is a state of mind. Okay. You know. I won't argue that. Uh, on a certain level, because I tend to be um, parochial, <laughs> one thing, and I tend to care about Afro-Americans, which I would define as the sons and daughters of slaves and slave owners. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have, uh, that doesn't, by the way, sound very parochial to me. It's very parochial because I don't care about my third world brothers and sisters and things like that that I'm sure I should. But as we... You mean you're responsible for a certain situation? I, I just can't deal with it. Yes, I, I think that if everybody dealt with their own little situation, yes. if I deal with my block mm -hmm. and you deal with your block, Malcolm we'll have said, two, two good And Malcolm people. said that too. Yeah. So then we would deal with white as being like a state of... Well, Malcolm said everything, which I would grant. No, I mean, really. he, he encompassed. But as we... Um, begin to try to deal, you know what I mean, with the world, we find that a lot of things break down. And we find that frequently a white face goes with a white mind. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, a black face goes with a white mind. Mm -hmm. Very seldom a, a white face will have a black mind. But we find the frequent situation is a white face has a white mind. Yeah, but you I, know what I, mean? I, I no, so I. So for the few no, mistakes that you would make, it's unfortunate. No, I know. I, <laughs> you know what I, I wouldn't. To me, I, it's unfortunate. I wouldn't argue that at all. Yeah. No, I wouldn't argue that at all. No, I, it, it doesn't make any difference to me. As I said once somewhere, you know, that uh, a cop is a cop. Well, cops no. are white. And you know, <laughs> yeah, and he may be, he yeah. may be a very nice man. But I haven't got the time to figure that out. You know, all I know is he's got a really uniform don't. and a gun. You know, and I have to relate to him that way. You know, <laughs> you really that's don't. the only way to relate to him mm -hmm. at all. Because one of us is going, you know, one of us may have to die. One of us, you know, in New York, there's a, a big campaign going on to humanize the um, policemen. And they have post uh, billboards upstate. And they have a picture of this big cop bending over this little blonde girl. Mm -hmm. and, and the signs say, and some people call him pig. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to buy a billboard. I told a friend of mine, I want to buy a billboard and show this big cop and this 14-year-old kid with 30 bullets in him and say, and some people call him peacemaker. You, know? you have to do one thing. One, yeah. one thing Lorraine, Lorraine Hansberry said, get this photograph. <laughs> when we had that famous meeting with Bobby Kennedy, Lorraine said to Bobby, who was also dead. Everybody's dead. You know. Lorraine said to Bobby, and answers something about black manhood. Jerome Smith had been talking about black men. And Lorraine said she wasn't worried about black men because they'd done very well, all things considered. She was very proud of them. But she told Bobby, she said, I'm very upset about the state of that civilization which produced that photograph of that white cop in Birmingham standing on that black woman's neck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What does that say for white manhood? But again, that's a moral position. Well, we, 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 if you we, follow we, what I mean by Yeah, moral. I do. I do. I do. That I means do. that we're on top of the situation by being on bottom. And many of us I'm not quite would like to see it the other way I'm not, around. I'm not, quite that, I'm not quite that romantic, or even, even if you want to use the word moral, quite that moral. I simply know, I think I know. You know look, I'm not a financier. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a banker. I'm not a, um, um, I'm not a practical man, so to speak. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm what I am. And I know... I know the choices I've had to make in my own life to be able to shave in the morning, to look myself in the face in the morning. Now, I'm not so moral as to sit here and say that if somebody had a gun pointed at my brother's head, that I would uh, pray for him, <laughs> you know. I'm not about to tell you, you know, that, um, Excuse me. that I'm lighting candles every day and every night for the soul of J. Edgar Hoover. You know, <laughs> yeah, on one level, I'm not moral at all. I don't care what happens to Hoover and all his tribe. At all. But I do care what happens to you. You know. Mm -hmm. And if I am moral, which I don't really think I am, but you know, it's a word you keep bringing up, the I can't relationship. Find another word for yeah, I know, it. I know, I know. But the relationship between morality and power is a very subtle one. You know, because power, ultimately, with no morality, is not any longer power. You cannot call Spain a powerful nation. You can't call Franco a powerful man. 
He's got a whole nation in jail. But that's not power. No. You know what I mean? Exactly. No. His game isn't running. Precisely. Precisely. Now, when our game starts running, and after all, after all, baby, we have survived the roughest game in the history of the world. Yeah. You know, we really have. No, no, no matter what we say against ourselves, you know, no matter what our limits and hang-ups are, you know, we have come through some. We have come through something, you know. And if we can get this far, we can get further, you know. And we got this far by by means which no one understands, including you and me. We're only beginning. To, we're only beginning to apprehend it. And you're a poet precisely because you are beginning to apprehend it and put it into a, into a form, you know, which will be useful for your kid, and his kid, you know, and for the world. Because we're not obliged to accept the world's definitions. Just because white people say they're white, we're not obliged to believe it. You know? I could see. Just because the Pope says he's a Christian, we're not obliged to believe it. It would be crazy you know? if we did. We have to make our own definitions and begin to rule the world that way. Because kids, white and black, cannot use what they have been given. You know? And they're rejecting it. They're rejecting it. Nobody wants to become the president of Pan Am or the governor of California, or Spiro to Agnew. The kids want to live, yeah. you know. And we have, out of a terrifying suffering, a certain sense of life which everybody needs, you know. And that's morality for me. You know, use the word morals, I would use the word energy. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. I can follow that, yeah. You know, it, anyway, it's a very mysterious endeavor, isn't it, you know? Because oh. the key is love. I was gonna say, it's hard to figure out black people. And that's, uh, no, really, I mean, you know, you know, because you. I know. It's very hard because you say, um, let's say somebody like you, you've been out of the church for a long time, okay? I grew up, of course, in a Baptist church, and I really dig the church. I do too. I think it's a very cool. I do too. I, I can't dig the theology, but the music and, and the energies of the church. Yes. But then I went to um, the New York Community Choir, I had its um, anniversary recently, its first anniversary. And I went up to an AME Zion church, as a matter of fact. And the lady was singing, some lady was singing, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And people started shouting. You know what I mean? Yes, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. People were shouting. And it hit me as I was sitting there. My God, as a so-called black militant, I have nothing stronger to offer than Jesus. Can yeah, you but you it? see, yeah, but yeah, but you, baby. And that was a mind. It blew, as a matter of fact, you have a church that said, Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> as I mean, that was testifies, ain't that? It blew my mind. <laughs> Baby, what we did with Jesus was not was you know was not supposed to happen. <laughs> no, at <laughs> all. That, no. yeah. We took him. We took that cat over we and made him ours. There's nothing whatever to do with, the, with that white Jesus in Montgomery, Alabama, in that white church. We did something else with him. We made him ours. Something in us knew that he was always really a nigger, because you know Swedes don't come from Israel. <laughs> 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 you know, you had to be fairly dark. Well, white people really deal more with God. And black people move with Jesus. No, they, they don't even deal with God. You know, they don't deal with God. They deal with God. For them, seems to be some some metaphor for purity and for safety. You know, the whole heart of the Christian legend has always been, in some sense, impressing as being, you know, really obscene. And it's the key to all the dirty jokes which come afterwards. You know, can you imagine what would happen to you, Nikki? I'm married to you. I go out to work. I come home. And you say to me, baby, you know what happened today? I said, no, what happened? Well, you know, the Holy Ghost came by. Oh, he did, did he? <laughs> <laughs> and um, Joe, <laughs> no. Uh, the Holy Ghost whispered in my ear, and I'm pregnant. Now, I might. I don't know, think you go for it. <laughs> I might, you know, I might look a little hard at you. <laughs> if I were really vulnerable, I might, I might, I might try to find that cat, the holy, the holy, the holy, the holy who? The holy who? The holy ghost. <laughs> this has been believed by millions of people yeah, they really who lived did. and died by it for two thousand years. Yeah. And when you attack it, you're accused of being blasphemous. I think the legend itself. Is a blasphemy. Yeah. What is wrong with a man and a woman sleeping together, making love to each other, and having a baby like everybody else? It's true. <laughs> it's not only. Why is the Son of God got to be born immaculately? Aren't we all the sons of God? 
That's a blasphemy. But we're not all the sons of God. Well, it depends on what you mean by God. Depends on who's doing it. <laughs> I've claimed him as my father. <laughs> and I'll, I'll give him a great, great vow of you now and the time until it's over. Because God is our responsibility. Well, I agree with that. No. You know, a lot of people don't realize. They think that we are God's responsibility. No, no, no. No, no, no. But it's one no, of no, no, him no, no. and, what, 30 no. million of us. That's right. So. And God's only hope is us. It's true. No. If we don't make it, he ain't going to make it either. He'd be a bitch. <laughs> yeah, now, people are funny about sex, which I never understood. Well, they're Except terrified of it. Things. Same way the people are. It's not about sex, either. It's not about sex. You know, sex is... Sex is not really the problem. Love is the problem. You know, when you're a kid, when you're a 16-year-old boy, 15-year-old boy, you know, what does he want, really? He wants release. You know, 15 year old you know. girl. <laughs> oh, yes, you know. And it doesn't, it's nothing yet, at that moment yet to do really with love, because love is something which comes much later, really. You know, a kid loves you in a certain way because he needs you. Mm -hmm. But later on, when you're a man or a woman, it has to be much more reciprocal. You love somebody because you need each other. Right. But this is not, one's not capable of this idea, you know, when you're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, when everything is sexual and everything is being discovered. Do you know? Mm -hmm. That's why so many of our kids turn into junkies, which we won't go into at the moment. Okay, but let's you know, come back. We, we, we'll it. come back to it. Mm -hmm. Do you know? But the great question is not that. The great question is, you see, if it seems to me that the black male the situation of the black male is in microcosm, the situation of the Christian world, the price of being a black man in America. God bless you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's it's the weather. <laughs> The price you had to pay, the price you're expected to pay, and which you have to outwit, is your sex. No, a black man is forbidden by definition, since he's black, to assume the roles, the burdens, the duties, and the joys of being a man, in the same way that my child producing your body was not, did not belong to me, but to the master. He could be sold at any moment. OK. You know what I mean? I can follow that. Mm? Mm? And this erodes a man's sexuality. When you erode a man's sexuality, you destroy his possibility to love anybody. You know, though sex and love are not the same thing, if the man's sexuality is gone, then his possibility, his hope of loving, is also gone. You know? He has no way to express He, 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 he has, has limited ways he has, to express he has, he has absolutely no floor on which to dance, no room in which to move, no way to get from one day to the next. Because they make love to you. It's not the same thing as taking you, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's a journey which both people have got to make with each other. But why do black men, uh, why do we allow this to happen? Look, when one begins to talk about, when I begin to talk about, you know, the situation of black men, I mean, anyone, I'm nearly 50, so that I've got to avoid sounding, you know, in any way defensive because No no. No, I, I'm, I, I'm I don't I don't I don't mean that I don't mean that I think that you're attacking me, but you ask me a question which I'm trying to answer as honestly as I can, I have to look back over my own life. Mm -hmm. You know. And you save yourself if you have any sense at all, and if you're lucky enough. You know if you lose your center. And let's say the center is your sex. If you lose that, if you allow that to be destroyed, then everything else is gone. And you have to figure out a way of, of saving it from the landlord. Because after all, I had to watch my father and what my father had to endure to raise nine children on $27.50 a week when he was working. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't know what the man was going through at all. I didn't know why you know, he was always in a rage. I didn't know why he was impossible to live with. But I had not had to go through yet his working day. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't quit his job because he had the kids to feed. You know, he couldn't say, as, you know, as, as our kids can, I don't like white people. He couldn't say anything. He lived his whole life in silence except in the church. You know? Mm -hmm. And he couldn't explain. How can you explain to a five-year-old kid 
you know, my boss, you know, called me a nigga and I, and I quit. And the kids, and the kids' belly's empty and you see it, you know, and you got to raise the kid. You know, you got to raise the kid. And your manhood is being slowly destroyed hour by hour, day by day, your woman's watching it. You're watching her watch it, you know, and the love that you have for each other is being to be destroyed hour by hour and day by day. It's not her fault, it's not your fault, but there it goes because the pressures under which you live are inhuman. My father finally went mad. And I understood when I became a man how that could happen. It wasn't that he didn't love us, he loved us. It wasn't that he didn't love his wife, his, our mother. He loved her, but he couldn't take it. Day after day, and hour after hour, being treated like a nigger on that job and in those streets and on those subways. And then coming home to his children, he didn't understand them at all, mm -hmm. who were moving further and further away from him because they were afraid of him. And also, which is even worse, afraid of the situation, the condition which he represented. He was, after all, for a kid, you begin to see when you're called a nigger, you look at your father, because you think your father can rule the world. Every kid thinks that, you know, and your father cannot do anything about it. And then you begin to despise your father, and you realize, oh, that's what a nigger is. And it's not your father's fault. And it's not your fault. It's the fault of the power, people who hold the power, because they have deliberately trained your father to be a slave. And they deliberately calculated that if he is a slave, you will be a slave. You will also accept it, and it will go on forever, and slavery will last a thousand years, which the slaveholders, slaveholders said and believed. And now the bill is in, and they want from me or from you sympathy and understanding. I understand it all too well, and I have all the sympathy in the world that spiritual disaster, but I have no pity. The bill is in. We paid it, now it's your turn. It's, it's a, it's like a funny situation to be in because like we were poor, but maybe unfortunately for somebody like me, not poor enough to relate to it. And that, you know, we had enough to eat like that, <laughs> things <laughs> like that. So that my relationship to that whole syndrome which remains true, I'm 28 to this day, is that I really don't understand it. I don't understand how one hand, you say you're talking about like a black man, that he can be nothing in the streets and so fearful in his home, that he can, he can be brutalized by some uh, white person somewhere and then come home and treat, you know, I mean, me, my it's mother, to, the same way that he was being treated. Which perpetuates, I mean, you take yes, somebody like me, I'm not married, right? Yes, but Nikki. I, I couldn't play my mother. Yes, I know. You know what I mean? I, I just know. couldn't deal with it. I said, no, no, but, no, this won't but work. But Nikki, it is also true that since your mother played that role, you haven't got to. I couldn't. But you haven't got to, that's the point. Because she did. But her mother did. Yes, you but. You know what I mean? Yes, but that's how we got here. I don't, what, I'm, what I really am trying to say is I don't want us to underestimate the price paid for us. I have a great deal of respect for those people, for, for my parents, for people that I don't know, for the whole, you know, everybody who shuffled. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's a phenomenon to me how you could be mistreated and then come home and mistreat someone the same way in order Well, first to of all, Nikki, first of all, Nikki, you say mistreated or I say mistreated. No. But in the, per the mind of the person who is doing it, he's not mistreating you. Well, I'm not dealing with that. Well, I'm not going to even, I mean, let's not for a minute. Let's say in the mind of, let's say your father, who is just an example, mm -hmm, or the mind mm -hmm, of my father, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He is being mistreated. I'm mm -hmm. not going to deal with the cracker that's mistreating him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with him. Mm -hmm. He knows that he is not being treated with the respect due him mm -hmm. as a person, mm -hmm. as a black man. Mm -hmm. Okay. In order to, like, get that together when mm -hmm. he comes into that house, mm -hmm. he begins to, like, brutalize my mother, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? Which mm -hmm. becomes like a phenomenon to me because I don't like white people and I'm afraid of black men, right? Mm -hmm. If you could follow what I'm saying without anybody well. writing a letter and saying, sister, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but you can... Okay, so where do, what do you do? Listen, you have to, I think it's what a, you have... It's a cycle. Of course it is, but you see, this is, what, this is one of the reasons I... This is one of the reasons I 
don't protest, but try to make clear that the words white and black don't mean anything. You know, the man, co a man comes home. You know, he is in a situation which he cannot control. He is a human being. It's got to come out somewhere. A, a poor Puerto Rican several years ago, for example, no, it's just, it's just, it's, a, it's, it's alleged. But I can see if this happened, why it happened. Cat came home and the three months old baby was screaming, and, you know, as babies do. And he killed it. He didn't mean to kill it. He picked it up and threw it against the wall. Yeah, I read it. He didn't mean to kill it. It wasn't that. I understand, you know, because I've been there. I know something about that. I don't know if it happens to a woman, but it happens to a man. You, you cannot do anything. They got you, they got you. They got you by the throat and by the balls. And of course it comes out, and it comes out, where, where would it come out? It because comes out in the person closest to you. I was going to say, that's so wrong, because what you perpetuate... But Nikki, it may be wrong. I hate to use those kind of terms. But, but... Nikki, it may, you, Nikki, it may be wrong. Of course it's wrong. But we're dealing with human beings. You know, one cannot be romantic about human nature. One cannot be romantic about one's own nature. That's not fair. I don't think that I'm romantic, but... No, I don't mean that you are. I one... have seen how the community, and even today in 1971, even today there are divisions based on those same... Yes, kind indeed. of problems. That's right. So that the black men say, in order for me to be a man, you walk 10 paces behind me. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it means nothing. I can walk 10 paces behind the dog. It means nothing to me. But if that's what he needs, I'll never get far enough behind him for him to be a man. You know what I mean? Look, I'll never walk that slowly. Look, Nikki, if at, at the risk of, at the very great risk of pulling, of seeming to pull rank. No. No. <laughs> pull rank. You know I'm not. I'm not. Go really. on. I'm not. <laughs> no. But I'm, no, no, I don't mean that. But, no. What I do mean is that, what I do mean is that I've, a great many things which seem, if I may say so, new to you, are not new to me. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I can say then, okay, I see, the, I see what the cat's doing. I know how long, I can tell you almost exactly how long he will do it. You know, I know that a great deal of what passes for black militancy right now is nothing but a fashion. You know, at best. You know, at best. <laughs> something will rest, something will remain. What is important about it is not the details, not the, not the given you know, people, you know, or the given so-called leaders or any of that jazz, you know. What is important is the impulse out of, it, out of which it has come, the ferment out of which it has come, which it reveals too, and what's valuable in it will, will remain and the rest will go. Yeah, but what's... Uh... You, you know what I mean? Yeah, but... Again, what's uh, sort of sad to be is that the same syndrome that, say, our father set up, mm -hmm. coming from many, you know what I mean? My father is your age. Mm -hmm. And the same syndromes Jesus. that they set up, well, you know, he's a little yeah. bit older, 55. But a the little same. A little bit older, 55. Thank you, baby. Well, yeah. seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> the same syndromes which, which is being set up, is being perpetuated, mm -hmm. is that once again, the black man is becoming the figure to slide away from. You know what I mean? That, that once again, the black man is the figure that you say, well, I can't, I can't handle that. And if you, uh, if you visit with the states or, you know, you talk to people enough, you'll see that that same syndrome, you know, the little guys that mm -hmm. are standing around crossing mm -hmm. their arms, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're not lovable. They're not giving any love. They could give a damn about me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's unfortunate because I need love. Yes, but sweetheart, sweetheart, it, what you're saying is very, very serious. I'm not, I'm not in the least denying it because you're perfectly right. But the only way we can get through it, I think, and it's, it's demanding a great deal of you, but one's got no choice but demanding a great deal of you, is that you understand. Look, let us say, let us say I'm King Oliver. All right. Right? And um, I'm a pretty good musician. A very good musician. Mm -hmm. And somebody called, let us say, Bing Crosby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. No, you couldn't carry a tune from here to here, right? Yeah. Right, Christmas. Right? That's true. Now I watch this little white boy become a millionaire, become a millionaire. Many times over, I can't get a job. 
you know. And time goes on. You get older. You get more weary. And since you cannot get a job, your morale begins to be destroyed. And the body begins to fail you. Your death approaches. All because being a man, you've never been able to execute what a man ought to be able to do. And this is not anything that you have done or not done by some arbitrary sentence. How in the world, if I can't get a job, if I can't even get my, my, my axe out of the pawn shop, if I can't even be, you know, get money to get on the subway, how am I going to love anybody except in such an awful pain and rage that nobody could bear it? I'm not trying to defend it. I'm trying to make you see it. Yeah. And you I, see what I, I mean? I do, but because maybe I'm hopeful, or because I've structured my life in a I way don't, that I won't... I don't, by the way, think that what I'm describing is any longer true for your generation. I don't mean that. But I, I see the same, what I keep saying, is that I see the same syndromes in the same guys that I have to deal with now. Yes, but my dear, my, my dear, what you have to see is also... If I, you got to... Look. Think about the kid. Think about the kid, you know. What you're going through is one thing, and I'm not trying to minimize it. I'm not trying to minimize it. It's not the worst thing in the world. I'm not trying to, I don't, I don't even mean you personally. Yeah, I, mean, I know, what, I, the generation, no. it's not. Yes, I don't mean, no, I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean you, Nikki, exactly. No, I hope that nobody, no. I'm not talking about no, me that no, much. No, I know, I know. But what I do mean is that, simply assume, for the moment, the kid is a useful metaphor because it, it carries you past one moment. Into the next. Into another moment. Because no matter what happens to me or to you, one's responsibility is somewhere else. So, so it's a terrible Tuesday and a, re and a wretched Friday. But, you know, you still, the kid don't know that. And then you begin to see, then you begin to see that what looked so awful on Wednesday or on Friday, or is so awful, is awful, but it's not eternal. You can get through it. Hopefully and when you get it. through it, you can understand it. Okay. We're not like in disagreement. What I'm trying to uh, maybe get you to relate to is that, and I lay it on black men because I'm a black woman. You have every I'm right sure to. That, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's that arbitrary. No, you have, a, you have but, every right to. But a guy, well, let's say a guy's going with girl. Mm -hmm. right? You're going with Maybelle. And Maybelle gets pregnant. All of a sudden, you can't speak to Maybelle because you don't have the money for a crib, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She doesn't need a crib. The baby's gonna sleep someplace. If you can follow me for two seconds, wait, wait. The baby's gonna sleep someplace. The baby's gonna eat something. But what she needs at that moment is a man. Mm -hmm. And in order, if, if, if the man functions as a man, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily a provider for all that stuff, because mm -hmm. everybody can understand why you can't buy something. You don't have a job. You didn't have a job when you always going to bed. Mm -hmm. Why are you gonna get a job because she got pregnant? You understand there's no job. But what she needs is a man to come by and say, hey, baby, you look good. And, 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 and black men refuse to function like that because they say, I want to bring the crib when I come. Baby, You're never going to get the crib. Baby, baby. Bring baby, yourself. Baby, I agree with you. I agree with you. I understand what you're saying. You know? But let me tell you this. You, know, you, you may be absolutely right, and you are right in your point of view. If it, you it's, it's, it's arbitrary. But you have to understand my point of view. I'm trying. You know? And from my point of view, well, if, I, if, 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 if you were pregnant, I would act very differently. That's, a, you know, that's, that's, but that's me, that's something else. But from the man's point of view, given the fact, as we said much earlier, that the standards of the civilization into which you were born are first outside of you. And by the time you get to be a man, they're inside of you. And this is not susceptible to any kind of judgment. It's a fact. If you're treated a certain way, you become a certain kind of person. If certain things are described to you as being real, they're real for you, whether they're real or not. And in this civilization, a man who cannot support his wife and his child is not a man. 
And this is also in the, for example, in the welfare rules. You know, yeah. the, the black man has always been treated as a slave, and of course he reacts that way, one way or another. You know, and you can blame him on a human level if you like, but I think it's more interesting to try, try to, you have to understand it, the bag the cat is in. But it's so... You know, because how can, how can I? You know, this is, I'm not being rational. You know, and I may love, I may love you, especially if I love you. How in the world am, I can't come with nothing. But, but it's not, I know it doesn't make any sense, Nikki, but no, a man it, is built not, like not, that. You see, when we talk about, and we talk about the children, right? Mm -hmm. when we talk about, like, let's say my little boy, mm -hmm. your nephew, something mm -hmm. like that. We talk about you. How are we going to create the new child in the same old syndrome? Well, somebody somebody well, has to fake it first, enough. You understand? Some, Somebody has to say, hell no, I can't buy you a bicycle, you don't need one. Yeah, and smile about it some, so the kid can say, I'm not afraid of daddy. But sometimes that happens, and after all... But not enough to talk about, um, when we talk about the group. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but wait. We're talking wait, about the group. Hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone, baby. You know, it has begun, something has begun. The fact that we're talking about it is a beginning. It's very important. You know, it's very important indeed. Look, I've had to learn in my own life, you know, I want this. I want it Friday. And Friday comes and I work you know, I work my behind off to get you know, get something done that I don't come. It doesn't come for twenty years. Then you use that twenty years. Look, life is a very short and very long time. It is, really it is. You know. And it's very important not to get hung up on any given detail because what is there, like the fact that you're a woman and the fact that I'm a man, that's going to be there forever, and we're going to deal with that it's there forever. From the beginning, you know, <laughs> sure. And that's we have to deal with it from day to day, from day to day, you know. Because if if we love each other, we both know it. The tragedy is we both know it, and the and the greater tragedy is that it's destroyed by things which have nothing to do with you and nothing to do with me. A man is built as he's built, and there's nothing one can do about that. A man is not a woman. That's true. You know, and, and whether he's wrong or right, look, if we're living in the same house, and you're my wife or my woman, I had to be responsible for that house. And I'm not allowed to be responsible for that house. I'm no longer in my own eyes. It doesn't make any difference what you may think of me. In my own eyes, that's fair. I'm not a man. That's, that's the, you, you it, see it what does I mean. indeed make, make a difference what I think about it. Because I could be perfectly willing, and as a matter of fact, I am perfectly willing to concede that, first of all, a man is a natural aggressor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't care if I walked up to you and said, let's go to bed. Mm -hmm. You are the aggressor. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Because it all depends on you. Mm -hmm. I could fool myself. I could fool my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got him. Mm -hmm. It depended on you. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see, so I'm never confused on that level. Yeah, but but I've seen I've seen so many people get so hung up in, in such crappy superficial kind of things that that for lack of being able to bring a steak in the house they won't come. I can get my own damn steak. Nikki, I need you, Nikki, and that's what the black. No, really, I mean yeah, that's what, to me what the black. Yeah, man but Nikki, you're perfect. Nikki, you're perfectly right, but I'm you're being. <laughs> <laughs> but you're being perfectly rational. But it's a rational situation. Yeah, but love is not a rational situation. Love must be. It, it must be rational, because this irrationality that we have does Look, not work. 20, it destroys people. I quite agree with you, but this is something we have to confront. When I was 22, I was, like, I was about to get married. And for several reasons, I threw my wedding rings in the river, and that was when I split. You know, decided I would leave. I didn't get married partly because I, just, I, partly because, partly because I had no future. It's very, very important. You had you no know. future. I had no right, future sure. at all. No, you got to go back to where I was. Yeah, 22. You know, okay. I had no future. I, I couldn't keep a job, you know, because I couldn't stand the people I was working for. And there wasn't a, I couldn't, nobody could call me a nigger. It's not a small, you know. Yeah, a little bit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I split, you know. Now, I love that girl, and I wanted children. But I already had eight. And they were all starving. Yeah. And from my point of view, it would have been an act of the most criminal irresponsibility 
to bring another mouth into the world which I could not feed. Yeah, but you see, those weren't your children. Those were your father's children. My father was dead. That's not the and point. as far as they knew, then... That's not what you, you... One cannot... And I'm not knocking I'm not, your I'm, life. You know I'm what not, I mean? Because I not, could... But one cannot be responsible for what one has I not produced. I said we are not being rational. But I said we must. I mean, that's no, no, no. my quarrel with no, no, no. We my, must become my, rational. My, those are my brothers and sisters. They were your brothers rational and sisters. Or not. They were but starving. they were your father's children but they, and your mother's children. That was my father's responsibility. As far as I was concerned, they belonged to me. Do you know what your life... And I'm saying it like that. You know what I mean? I'm trying to... Do you know what your life looks like, though? And this is what's happening also today. It looks like a black man can't make it with a black woman. If somebody looks at the two of us, man, we're the weirdest looking people on earth because you went your way and I went my way. Which is saying the same thing, and that's sort of a shame to but say Nikki, that a, I can't Nikki, have a black man standing Nikki, with me and you can't have a black woman because we wouldn't be who we are if we had. But and Nick, that's a fact. But Nikki, we are nevertheless, we are here, we met. Oh, you and I met. Yes. But I'm talking about for the statement, man. You're looking like a Huey Newton. Yeah. He can't make it with a black... Who could, who could be his woman? We don't know... Oh, it's, it's such a shame. We don't know that much about the man. We, we know what the image... Yeah, but... We know what, the, but what, you, what, we've, but what we've seen. Let us forget the image. We don't know anything at all about the man. We know a little bit. Let us assume we don't. Okay, let us assume we don't. No. If, insofar as it's true, if it's true, that Huey, for example, cannot make it with a black woman. I don't know that that's true. I don't know that it's true. I'm saying you know, that to date. That is part of the trap to make one believe that. I don't believe that myself. You know, it's part of a societal illusion which we, you, which you're expected to believe, so that you can react to it and be distracted from the main point, which is one's relationship to each other.